So we finally have our hands on the Alienware M18R2, the gargantuan gaming laptop with incredible performance. This laptop is so unapologetically large, it won't fit in 99% of any laptop bag out there. A laptop so heavy that only the strongest gamers among us can lift it like Thor's hammer. Yet despite its size, this laptop was incredibly popular last year with the R1 and was my favorite Anywhere release of 2023. So how does it perform in the 2024 model? Let's get into it. Now I will put timestamps down below, as if you've used the R1, then this R2 will look quite familiar to you. We get the same chassis weighing in at 4.23 kilograms with the same cumbersome dimensions, including that rear grille, making this laptop deeper than most at 320 millimeters, which is the main reason it won't fit in a laptop bag. Build quality is excellent. As usual for anywhere, it's built like a tank with no squeaks or creaks. The laptop only comes in one color, the dark metallic moon, with a nice metallic feel externally and a nice soft touch finish on the palm rest, making the laptop incredibly comfortable to use. With regards to the specs, as always with Dell, you can custom configure it on their website with a 14th gen CPU ranging from the 14650HX right up to the 14900HX. You can also choose the NVIDIA RTX 4060 up to an RTX 4090, and the RAM and SSDs can be configured to suit your needs, and it has a Wi-Fi 7 as standard. Sadly this year, there is only one monitor choice, and that's a 2560 by 1600p 165 hz panel, and we will look at that one more later. And for the purpose of this review, we've ordered the i9 4900K with a 4080, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. Now looking around the laptop, we get a great range of ports. On the left side, we get the RJ45, two USB A's, and a headset jack. And on the right side, we just get a USB-C port. At the rear of the laptop, we get a power jack, a full-size memory card slot, a mini display port, an HDMI 2.1, another USB-A, and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. These are all the ports you really need from a desktop replacement. And on the whole, the placement itself is well spread over the entire laptop except for the RJ45 on the side and a memory card on the back. I complained about it last year and I'm gonna complain about it again. And I'm sure you will too once you've given this laptop a few reach rounds trying to get the photos off your memory card. Being an Alienware, RGB is a given with the usual oval light strip right around the rear. Now, although this is only one color zone, it still looks great. We also get the lit alien head on the rear as well as the alien head power button and the per key RGB keyboard and this is all controlled in the Alienware command center. Now lifting the screen is reasonably heavy and satisfying. The screen stays firmly in place with little wobble when in use. This reveals the large palm rest and touchpad and a keyboard with a number pad. As it's a large eight inch laptop, there's plenty of room on that palm rest, meaning it's very comfortable to rest your wrist when typing on this keyboard itself. The touchpad, although not a premium glass touchpad like the X, still performs very well for both gestures and control. It's pretty large, but not too big to cause accidental touches like on the Razer Blade 18 we reviewed last year. Moving up to the keyboard leads me to one of my favorite features on an Alienware laptop. The M18 can be configured with either a standard or a mechanical keyboard. Both are excellent, and my advice would be, if you want a quiet keyboard, get the standard. If you love the tactile feel of a traditional mechanical keyboard, then get the Cherry MX version that I have here. Listen to this. That sound and feel is amazing, as is the layout and the backlighting. The M18 has a keyboard with a number pad befitting of such a large laptop. But if you buy the M16 version, you get the centered keyboard without a number pad itself. So they really are catering to everyone. The lighting is vibrant and bright and can be completely customized in the Alienware command center. But I just love this wave effect that I've got here from one of the presets and I always set my laptop to it. We also get dedicated macro keys and media keys, as well as a F1 power boost button that you can use instead of going through the radio command center. Now above the keyboard, we've got air intake vents, and unfortunately these are not speaker grills. The speakers are downward firing and sound like this. Speaker test of the Alienware M18 R2 at 50% volume. And now 80%. So the speakers do get very loud. 
but unfortunately they're lacking in bass and they do sound a little bit tinny and I think that's just the joys of just some two, two watt downward firing speakers. Moving up to the screen and we get only one option this year, the 2560 by 1600 165 hertz 18 inch panel. Its brightness is only 300 nits yet again and it's a shame that Dell haven't looked at their competitors with their 500 plus nit screens. And it's a real shame because it's otherwise a great panel with its color accurate and fast 165 hertz, which is great for fluid motion such as fast paced games. Now above the screen, we've got a 1080p webcam. And this is the test of the webcam and the microphones on the new Anywhere M18 R2. And it also includes Windows Hello facial recognition, which is my favorite way of logging into Windows. Okay, so let's shut it down now and take a look inside the laptop. Once we've unscrewed the eight screws and popped off the bottom cover, we can see an identical layout to the R1. We still have the 97 watt hour battery right along the front, as well as two 80 millimeter SSDs that all the M18s get, and two extra 30 millimeters that the 4080 and 4090 version get. We also get two DDR5 RAM slots and a replaceable Wi-Fi 7 card with a heatsink. With regards to the fans, we have a small fan blowing cool air over the RAM, plus two larger fans at the rear and one small one at the side to dissipate all that hot air from these powerful components. Sadly, as usual with Dell, the motherboard is inverted, meaning we cannot see the vapor chamber, and if you do want to repaste it, you will need to disassemble the whole laptop. Now that leads me neatly to the CP performance. The 14900HX is pretty much a rebrand of the 13900HX. They both have the same eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores, but this year the max boost is up to 5.8 gigahertz. Now that's up from 5.4 gigahertz on the last year's chip. Sadly, yet again, despite having an HX unlocked chip in this laptop, I cannot get undervolting working. Now looking at the benchmark scores for this CPU, and you can see there is a slight improvement in the single core scores, as expected with the higher max boost clocks. But the multi-core scores remain almost identical as we're power limited, even with a large chassis like the M18. The good news is the power available to the CPU is over 200 watts in CPU only task, which is much better than slimmer laptops like the Razer Blade 18. Moving on to the GPU scores, and it's a slight improvement over last year's R1, despite having that same 175 watt 4080 GPU, leading me to believe they have a slightly improved the cooling system, as they now state the M18 R2 can handle 275 watts of combined heat this year. We are getting solid scores not only in Time Spy, but also Firestrike and all the game benchmarks we've tested. Plus with this model, we get advanced Optimus and a G-Sync capable laptop panel. And that leads me neatly onto the gaming itself, and this is a joy to behold on a large screen and large chassis laptop like this. Now yes, it can get loud in anything but the quiet mode, but we're getting a full 175 watt on the GPU, as well as very often over 100 watts on that CPU. Plus the comfortable palm rest and keyboard that never warms up, and if you've watched my previous videos, you know I hate hot WASD keys. That's a complete pet hate of mine, especially on those long gaming sessions. Now the good speakers and large fast screen is really the icing on the cake. But before we move off the performance section, I have to talk about the Alienware Command Center. And as usual, this is an area that really lets this laptop down. Although we've had some subtle improvements this year, such as a dedicated muck switch and options to turn off the in-game profiles, the Alienware Command Center is still the same pile of rubbish that we've had for years. The profiles are a complete mess with the balance, performance and overdrive performing so close together, I don't know why they've even bothered. Just either use it for quiet when you want a quiet experience or otherwise leave it on balanced. Now we do have the F1 boost key, which improves things slightly with louder fans, but this just doesn't seem enough difference to warrant putting it in this laptop. Plus the lighting section is very convoluted, the software is slow to start and also to update, and the custom mode is a complete joke, which leaves me wondering why the company the size of Dell cannot do better. I've guessed they've just handed out this Anywhere Command Center to an intern. Okay, so enough of the gaming. Let's take a look at the battery performance, and you probably aren't going to be buying this laptop to use at a coffee shop, but our usual battery test, streaming YouTube over Wi-Fi at 200 nits of brightness, we managed just over four hours before we ran out of power. CPU performance on battery is also pretty good, I mean it'd be great for a bit of work on the go, but sadly gaming performance is absolutely terrible, meaning you're going to be limited to probably solitaire when you're not on the mains. And also sadly, Dell still haven't added power delivery for the M series range of laptops, meaning you cannot charge the laptop from a USB-C charger, a power bank, or a monitor, which is something that I've absolutely loved doing on my Razer Blade 18. So it's a real shame that Dell won't add it to their Alienware line. 
but at least they did supply the smaller 360 watt GAN charger. Okay then, so let's get on to the conclusion. And I have to be honest, 2024 is a bit of a meh year for laptops. These are all pretty much refreshes of last year's models. But the good news is that Dell have reduced the price of the M18 R2, at least in the UK. This year I got this model for £2,600. Last year for a very similar spec, I was paying nearly £3,000. That's quite a difference. But if you didn't buy a laptop last year and you are looking for a laptop, this really is a fantastic 18 inch desktop replacement. It's a really great option, especially if you're just planning on putting on a desk and gaming. Now there are a couple of niggles, such as Anywhere Command Center, a 300 nit screen, and no power delivery, but otherwise you're getting a fantastic performing laptop that performs better than most other 18 inch machines at not a bad price. Plus it's backed up with Dell's warranty and support, making it in my opinion, a great option for a desktop replacement. Now as always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Put your comments in the section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thanks for watching.